seen this happen in Jamaica, I've seen it happen in Caribbean, and I've seen it happen in all over America. And they think that putting on a show is an opportunity to be able to make some money. But the problem is, is that when it comes to promoters, you have to be in this business a long time. You actually have to have capital before you actually put on a show. That means you have to have money for the sound system, money for the security, money for the venue, money for all these different things. And then if you have the money up front and then you're able to sell the show, then you can make profit and make money. So what had happened was um, that no nobody had been paid and we did not know about security because we don't actually travel with security. You know, we're not the let kind of... Let me explain it. Okay. <laughs> what happened was... You weren't even there though. Let me explain what happened. In a few months, mm -hmm. you will hear some new collaborations mm -hmm. with Pata Banton and Kenyan artists. I am keeping it a secret. <laughs> the, the highway, the driving, the truck drivers. The, uh -huh. That's sometimes we are driving to a city, and when we look, we see two trucks coming. There's no road, <laughs> so we have to drive off the road. You know, um, and then there was this big accident in Londiani, which was very sad. And, but I can understand why there's so many accidents. There, there needs to be more discipline, you know, more consideration of not only the drivers on the road, but also the guys on the motorbikes, the guys on the, uh, on the bicycles, the pedestrians walking, the people selling the food on the side of the road. There needs to just be more consciousness and, and just slow down. You know, because when they're rushing, they're going to take somebody's life just to save five minutes. You know, so that was the negative. The, the, the good culture shock is um, I love the food in Kenya. And these guys have shown me that when you're eating in Kenya, you, you don't need a knife and fork. You just wash your hands and you eat. This is, this is um, something hard for me to explain. But I've been, we've been traveling across Kenya now for eight days, nine days, and we've been to Meru, Katuru, um, Eldoret, Machakos, Kitui County. We've been to a lot of places, and we've met a lot of people, and everybody's still excited about the sound. The, the, the radio DJs are still playing the sound, the TV is still playing the sound. And um, I just, I don't know how to explain it, but I can only say it's vibes. That's the only thing I can say is that it's vibes, you know. Um, it's like in Brazil, you know, Go Pato was a hit in Brazil maybe 20 years ago. And it's still a hit in Brazil now. It's still one of the most played songs in Brazil today. And every time I go there, it's big big shows, big media, and I, I can only say it's the vibes. So I think that this song has a vibe that the Kenyan people like. I, I listen to a lot of the Kenyan music now, and a lot of the beat is the same kind of beat. You know? And um, once you play that beat and everyone start dancing, then you can put the other songs from the Kenya artists with the same beat. So it's good for the DJs too. So, um, you know, we didn't promote Go Pato. There's no record company behind it. There's no money behind it. It's just the fans and the people love the song and play the song. And all I can say is um, Asante Sana. You know? That's all I can say, Asante Sana. Okay, Pato Banton, my name is Ed Godiambo, a freelance journalist. Uh, my question goes to the CEO of Shofko, uh, Kennedy Odede. Currently, I've seen you are doing an amazing job whereby you happens to open one of the circles currently help, helping the Mamamboga and also the community at large. Eh? And uh, today you guys are also partnering with, uh, with Pato Banton to have an uh, amazing event. Uh, you guys whereby you are featuring the youth. Eh? What is the main uh, reason you guys happens to partner together? What is the main reasons for this? Well, I know for Banton, uh, but we don't, we don't know each other personally. Yes. With the music. Yes. So I always believe in supporting the youth. So uh, there's a young man who is now sick, I hope he's feeling the best. Yes. Born, yes. Yes. Huh? Born. 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 Born.
So I think honestly it's him who did it, you know? And that's how it happened. But there are special people. For them to agree to that young man to come means a lot to me. You know what I mean? They, they really came from their heart. So we are just so humble that this is how we came to movement. What about so, connecting? So let, 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 let me add to the story. Yes. <laughs> there is a brother here named Collins. Collins, what's your what's your full name? Come over here for a second. Come stand help. Come stand right here, please. Yes, come here. So I, I, I put a message on Facebook saying I have a dream to come to Kenya because so many of the people in Kenya are sending me messages um, on the media saying, please come to Kenya. Go Pato is a big song. Is a, they say a club banger. <laughs> so come to Kenya. And so I put a message on Facebook saying, my dream is to come to Kenya to do some shows for the people. And then this brother, he says, Pato, I am from the Kibera slums, Chocolate City. I would like to give you a tour of Kibra so that you can get to know the place and meet some of the people. And he also has a charity called Kibera Hope, Agape Hope for Kibera. And he said he wanted to give donations of food to some of the people who are struggling, you know. So he asked me if I would help. And I said, yes, I would love to come. And then the tour was almost canceled. I didn't hear from him for three months. And, and, and then his brother, Van Sevic, contacted me and said, Pato, would you do a free show in Kibra? And I said, I would love to do a free show, but we must include Collins because he invited me three months ago. So we cut in contact with Collins we spoke to Ban Sevic, and then we realized that there was no money. I didn't realize we were going to have to hire a sound system and a PA <laughs> and all of these yeah. things and an event place. So I, had, I, I made a small contribution to the concert, and then Ban Sevic said, what's your name again? Kennedy. Like <laughs> Kennedy from, from this organization. Would, he would contact him to ask if it would be possible to make this dream a reality. And when he contacted you, you said yes. <laughs> and then we said, right, now we're going to do it. Full <laughs> so that is the full story. Wow, story. So the last question, uh, uh, my last question. Eh? Currently we are having this event and you uh, guys, uh, you have, uh, now you guys are partnering with uh, an international artist. Are we also looking forward as you, as the organization of, and uh, the CEO of Shofko, are you also looking forward to, you know, invite other artists, the international artists and also you know, people like them want to come and also participate in these kind of activities because I, I know through these kind of events also the youths are being motivated. Are you also planning to invite other artists apart from Pato Banto? Yeah, so, so for today we have the better artists who are really have to perform yes. and that's for us a way to promote their talent, right? This is just like a miracle. Yes. It happened. We never planned this, honestly. You know? And I believe there's a reason why it happened. We'll sit down and see what else from here we can be able to do. So let's see what happened from yes. today. So we're just so excited. This, this is the start of something new. Yes. And hopefully this will be a great starting point and launching point for yes. many of the artists in the slums. Yeah. We need a chance to get exposed to the world. Because trust me, this will be exposed to the world today. So, so in a few months, mm -hmm. we will hear some new collaborations Ooh. with Pato Banton and Kenyan artists. I am keeping it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going straight to the studio mm -hmm. when we get home. We already have three songs with three artists. Mm -hmm. Maybe four songs actually. Mm -hmm. But yes, we are. We are we are working on this right now. And there's an artist from Kibera who also has a beautiful song about peace and love and unity. I'm very excited to record this song. That's what I was going to say was that the other, when we first got here, the first night when Collins came to visit us at the hotel, he brought some of the Kibera artists over to the hotel and we started our little jam session that night. So there was a lot of great talent there. So we are actually going to be writing some music together. So. Okay, last question uh, to our uh, our mother. 
uh, Madam Anete. Antoinette. Uh, okay, the last uh, time you happens to have an uh, event, uh, there is a clip that went viral, you complaining of being mistreated, eh? and uh, it raised uh, an eyebrow to most of the Kenyan, and uh, they felt like this was not right. Eh? Uh, can you tell us exactly what really happened and also, uh, because I know currently you're going to Kibera Chocolate City and I, I know your security is guaranteed. With Shoku, I, I know your security is guaranteed. Can you just tell us a few exactly what really happened? Because most of the people are really eager to know exactly what happened. What happened in Eldorad? Yes. Well, <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of weird because this has happened to be before in Africa. You know, but when I had bought my keyboards, um, this is not my first time to Africa bringing my keyboards. And I'm always very hesitant about bringing such valuable equipment to Africa. But also at the same time, when I came before, I came with Anthony B before, I came with Glenn Washington, I've come with Sister Carol, and now coming together with Pato. It's like, we want to give you the best experience of what the music that when we're recording outside. You know, so the equipment is like stuff that I programmed for many years ago. Uh, that we put together for like to give you like the professional sound of what we actually have but sometimes we, there are instances not all the time but sometimes there's incidences where promoters try to put on a show and they don't actually have the funds to put on a show and I've seen this happen in Jamaica I've seen it happen in Caribbean and I've seen it happen in all over America and they think that putting on a show is an opportunity to be able to make some money but the problem is, is that when it comes to promoters, you have to be in this business a long time. You actually have to have capital before you actually put on a show. That means you have to have money for the sound system, money for the security, money for the venue, money for all these different things. And then if you have the money up front and then you're able to sell the show, then you can make profit and make money. So what had happened was um, that no, nobody had been paid and we did not know about security because we don't actually travel with security, you know, we're not the let kind of... Let me explain it. Okay. <laughs> what happened was... You weren't even there though. Let me explain yeah. what happened. The promoter in Eldoret mm -hmm. hired the sound system, <laughs> the stage and the security. Mm -hmm. The venue was given to him for free. Yes. But he did not pay for the sound, the stage or the security. Mm -hmm. So when it was time for the show, the, the, the stage and the sound companies said, no, we're not doing the show till we get money. Mm -hmm. And then the security tried to take her keyboards mm -hmm. for, their, for their payment. Mm -hmm. And so Antoinette had to fight the security guards mm -hmm. so that she could, they would not take her keyboards. In fact, and it, then seven, five of the girls from yeah. Eldoret yes, helped Queens Antoinette oh. yes. Yes. fight for the keyboards. Yes, because they was fighting those guys. They and was then <laughs> they, 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 she still has her keyboards. Yes. Ah, thanks cool. to the girls <laughs> and thanks to DJ X Matic. And WizKid, because WizKid was sitting there. Frank sitting there, Frank Kid. Yeah, <laughs> I call him WizKid. But Frank Kid, he was sitting there talking to them. He was like, he was talking to them. I said, no, everything is okay. He said, no, it's not okay. They want to take your keyboards. I was like, oh, hell no. So I went to grab my keyboards, and that's when this big guy, I mean, these are yeah, big he, guys. They're like six was, foot six, uh, it, big it dude. It, it, it was not pretty. And when they were sitting there fighting with them, you know, with the keyboards or whatever. Yeah. But the minute they put their hands on me, that's when they shut that down when the management came over there. But apart from that, we had a nice after party in yes. our hotel room. With the girls from Eldorado. With the girls that helped Antoinette. Queens. And we, we gave them a private show, and we had a good time. We had some nice drinks and some nice food. And everything else on the trip has been fantastic. Thank you. Let's have two last questions, and then we go to Korogosho, please. OK, you know, it's crazy how Kibra, Kenyans. Kibra. You're next. Kibra. Okay, all right. You first. You first. OK, it's, ha it's crazy how Kenyans <laughs> jump up to this part of the song. And maybe for the people who are watching this video for the first time, maybe Tell us who's Pato and uh, where is Pato. Thank you. All right. I'll make it quick. Yes. Um, Pato Banton was born in London, England. Um, I grew up in a city called Birmingham, England, the same city as Steel Pulse and UB40. And um, I started, my, my father was a, my stepfather was a DJ from Jamaica. And so I grew up in the sound system, in the dance hall. And by the time I was about 10 years old, I started going on the microphone. 
and I was the number one MC in my city for seven years in a row until I started my career. And um, once I started my career, I traveled the whole world many times and um, had many hits in different countries. And um, I'm just very happy right now. I'm not now living in Los Angeles, still making music, helping other artists. And I do a lot of charity work for different communities around the world, me and Antoinette. And uh, we're just very happy right now to have the opportunity to be here with you. Hi, my name is Angie. I'm from Eskimo Bus. And um, assuming it's your first time in Kenya, yeah? Yeah. Um, as, as part of Anton, yes. As part of Anton, yes. Is there any culture shock that you have experienced so far in all your places in the kitchen? Yes. And what's that? The road! <laughs> <laughs> the, the highway! The driving! The truck drivers. The, uh -huh. That's Sometimes we are driving to a city and when we look, we see two trucks coming. There's no road. <laughs> so we have to drive off the road, you know? Um, and then there was this big accident in Londiani, which was very sad. And, but I can understand why there's so many accidents. There, there needs to be more discipline, you know, more consideration of not only the drivers on the road, but also the guys on the motorbikes, the guys on the, uh, on the bicycles, the pedestrians walking, the people selling the food on the side of the road. There needs to just be more consciousness and, and just slow down, you know, because when they're rushing, they're going to take somebody's life just to save five minutes, you know. So that was the negative. The, the, the good culture shock is um, I love the food in Kenya and these guys have shown me that when you're eating in Kenya you, you don't need a knife and fork you just wash your hands and you eat <laughs> and yeah the food is very good um, the people are very beautiful the Kenyan women are very beautiful um, I feel a lot of love from the Kenyan brothers it's very hard to come you know I don't feel a lot of negative jealousy or bad vibes. I know there is that. I know there is that in Kenya. But in my experience of Kenya, it's been very, very, very beautiful people. You know, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So we are heading uh, straight to Kampuji Towns. Welcome to 